Uh, hello, today we are going to see the, this webinar, we are going to have an overview about the, the advanced uh, features of civil film for uh, pre-stressing, post and, and pre-tension uh, concrete modeling, civil film 2017. Well, um, stress concrete is used uh, wild uh, uh, for many civil structures such as uh, bridges, uh, slabs, uh, many many type of of uh, structures, tanks, stadiums, and well, civil film has a lot of uh, advanced features for modeling uh, this type of uh, all these type of uh, structures. Uh, some of these civil film uh, features are first that they, they can they can be done for beams, cells and solid elements. So civil film pre-stressed futures can be applied to all type of elements. Well first for defining this this pre-stressing uh, we have a long uh, pre-stressing steel material library where we have all the material properties defined, uh, code dependent properties and they all can be modified by the user. After selecting the pre-stressing steel materials uh, there are some tools to define the, the geometry of the tendons, the layout of the tendons. Uh, after defining all the tendons, CIDLFEM uh, calculates automatically the short and long term lo losses and apply automatically transfer all the, these losses to the finite element model. So yes, we are applying uh, equivalent pre-stressing losses, uh, equivalent pre-stressing forces to the, to the finite elements, to beam cells or solids we can combine these loads with any other type of loads. Static loads, also uh, the response spectrum uh, analysis loads, any type of loads can be combined. After combining these loads, they can be a uh, check and design, axial, bending, shear and cracking, checking and design. Also, uh, we can combine these tendons with the construction process. So the tendons can be activated and deactivated in the same way, we can activate and deactivate elements and materials and perform a very detailed construction process uh, together with the material, the time-dependent material properties that Sibogen has. And moreover, we can also uh, mix these um, this, uh, pre-stress concrete, concrete features with the nonlinear uh, nonlinear capabilities of SIGOFEM. Concrete material model, nonlinear concrete material model with uh, pre-stress and post-stress um, post effects and also with any other type of non-linearities that the civil firm has. Well, uh, just um, for having this, uh, for overviewing all these capabilities, we will see uh, four examples. The first example is a post, a post tension eye curator. Uh, first, we will see a, a, a beam model. In that model, we are applying uh, pre-stressing loads that we will combine with other static loads we will generate the, the ultimate limited state combination and the seriability limited state combination and check by, check by code uh, uh, axial plus bending and also cracking on, also CR. Uh, after, uh, after reviewing this model, uh, we, will, uh, we will perform the same, the same uh, analysis but in a, uh, in a solid element model, the same model but with solid elements and non-linear analysis. We will have uh, the concrete material uh, non-linear model and all many other non-linearities and we will compare both results. After that we are seeing a uh, box curter bridge and also in this model after, uh, and after making the, the combinations, check and design by code, calculating reinforcement amounts, we will also uh, perform other analysis with the construction process of the model. And the two last examples will be a foundation slab. It will be modeled with shell, shell elements and also we will apply uh, load combinations and code uh, checking and design. We will obtain needed reinforcement amounts and with four thickness optimizations. And we will compare the same slab with and without uh, uh, tendons to see the effect of these tendons and, and well, um, the, um, uh, uh, how uh, with tendons uh, we reduce the the passive reinforcement. And the last, the last example will be a natural liquid gas tank, also modeled with cell elements. It could be also modeled with solid elements. We will apply two, two group of, of tendons, vertical tendons and circular tendons in all the walls of the, of the tank. There are no tendons on the, on the roof. 
the, on the dome of the, of the tank. So uh, the first example is a post-tension eye girder. This, this model, the first one, we are, um, uh, we are seeing a beam model. And this beam model uh, loses are calculated automatically. And the, the equivalent forces, the, the pre-stressing loads, are applied to the model. We combine these loads and check and design by code. OK, so well, if we open civil film, and well, first now can we select the, the, the licenses and the codes like. Just we, were, we are going to open the example. And the first example is the BIM model. This is the BIM model. And well, this is the this is the the beam. We can see with different. We have different options for viewing uh, for viewing the um, uh, the beam model. And here, if we use this type of view, we can also plot the stressing effect. And here we can see the tendons inside the model. We have three tendons, and in these tendons. Uh, the tendons are located in, in the load groups. Here we have the three tendons that are generated. Stress tendon 1, 2, and 3. And here, uh, when we select any of these, here we have all the information of, of that tendon. Here uh, we have uh, the, the option to calculate the uh, losses. Here we can see here, these are the losses of the of the tendon that are automatically calculated by them. So here we have the different losses, the C baits uh, uh, the, um, of the anchors, uh, the peg, also elastic shortening, uh, um, sink rates, creep, and uh, well the rest of the of the losses. These losses uh, depends on the time we are solving. So to, for calculating. Just we can press here, calculate losses, and we set different different value and the time for these losses to be calculated. We are calculating losses for day uh, uh, for day zero, so we are uh, having only short term losses. So well, after defining uh, these tendons, we can add different tendons, define different uh, different geometry, and the tendons table. Defining these tendons, this tendons, uh, this tendon information is here in the load groups. Uh, well, after defining the tendons and any other load groups like the, the linear pressure, we can plot here the linear pressure on the model. That is a pressure on it. MS. We can combine uh, these values, so we can combine the tendons and also the uh, the other loads. So in this model, we have solved uh, three, three load cases. The first load case is the pre-stressing, the pre-stressing information. So here we have in the loads, in the load case, we have the three tendons. We can also apply different uh, factors to these tendons. So we can combine, what we are doing is combining the forces and the effect of these tendons. The second combination is the ultimate limit state combination where we apply different uh, safety factors. Uh, these factors are for the pre-stressing uh, loads 0.9 because they are favorable loads. For the for the overloads, the linear pressure on top, we are applying a load combination of 1.5. And for the gravity, that is a permanent load, 1.35. So with these coefficients, uh, we are solving this ultimate limit state combination. The next combination is one is just with all coefficients equal to one that will be for the shear reliability limit state combination. After defining all the combinations with the tendons that are included in the combinations like a, another load, we just go to solve. Pressing here, we solve the model. Solving the model, like to solve, save it. So here we have the results. We have solved all them. After solving, we just read the load uh, the results and uh, and check by code. So first, we are going to uh, uh, read the ultimate limit state combination. Press OK, 
and a, a check by code. In this section, first I'm going to see the section and the reinforcement amount that we have. We can plot it and here we can see we have different reinforcement groups. We can see here also the information and we have on top uh, five bars and the diameter of these bars are 12 millimeters. Uh, for the bottom part we have five bars as well but 25 millimeters. So okay, well, we close this information and we are going to check by code. Here we are going to check, well first we can decide which is the active code we would like to use for checking. That is at the beginning, environment, and here we have the selected codes. In this case we are using the ACI 318 for the checking the edition of 2014. But we have, we can select any other code and use them for checking and design. So while well, here in the result solution we are going to check for axial and plus bending in the press tracing. We also have axial bending without press stress and axial bending. Clicking here, we uh, check the model. Here we have some information. Here the load case that we are using. The plane we can check in X, Y and uh, different direction and all model or just a part of the model. I check all model and well, just I have their solution. So results, open the results and here I have just selecting with type of results, results or checking and design results. Here we have, I have just checked for the ACI 318 and, uh, and uh, actual plus bending. I select that result and first I can plot total criterion. Total criterion, I plot it and we can see this criterion is 0 0.85. So it means the sections are okay. The criterion if we plot the interaction diagram, in example, here beam press tracing as well, and I'm going to select element number 10 and plot this interaction diagram. The interaction diagram is giving me the ratio of the actions, in this case the action are this, this point, and uh, the ultimate strength that are the red one in the, in the interaction diagram limit. So the safety factor is the ratio between the, the two distances from the center to the uh, to the over action, the yellow point, divided that distance uh, by the distance from the center to the ultimate strength. So that ratio means that uh, criterion that is that it, this is less than one, the actions are inside the interaction diagram and the model is okay. If this uh, value is greater than one, it means our actions, bending moment, axial force are outside it. So well, in this case, we can see that uh, that the model is okay. I can open the, the other results. In this case, uh, the, the serial limit, the limit state combination, open it, and now uh, we can check uh, the model for cracking. This guy is cracking checking and we press here OK and we perform the cracking checking analysis. If I load uh, the results, open here, cracking checking, and well here I have ACI results, cracking checking, I open it and the total criterion plotted so well, I can see it's 1, so it's just in the limit between 1 and 0. So uh, this model, we can analyze in this, this model and these results can say this model is okay for uh, axial plus bending and also for cracking. We could also check in the ultimate limit state, we could also check for uh, for CR and well uh, also we can design uh, instead of we are checking the reinforcement amount we have defined it but we could also design. If we design we can get the reinforcement amount and the factors for the reinforcement amount we have defined. Well. This is a first model uh, that we can use for um, that we can use for we have used to explain a little bit this uh, this new uh, capability of the press tracing. We can see here we can define a press tracing on beams, cells, and solids. So we can apply this to all type of of, uh, of elements. And well, in this case, we have defined this press tracing to the uh, to this beam element. 
Well, the next model we are going to open is exactly the same model, but with solid elements. So what we are doing is uh, solving the other, the other, uh, like in the other type of of models. Uh, the first one is the easiest one, modeling with beam elements, uh, uh, a linear model, uh, I apply these loads, uh, load combinations, and check my code. But another another way is modeling with solid elements, as we can see here. These solid elements uh, we have nonlinear uh, concrete model. Uh, here you can see the behavior of this concrete model, taking into account the principal uh, uh, stresses. The concrete model will have this behavior. So we have a first uh, elastic low. For compression, we will have a hardening, hardening low with parabolic curve and with allowable strains for uh, crushing. Uh, for crushing, uh, just when we reach uh, uh, allowable deformation for compression, the, the concrete crash and uh, that element is, is, is not working. For tension, uh, when, when the, the stress reaches to the cracking stress, then we have a softening, softening modulus until uh, uh, the, the, the stress, the tension stress is uh, reached to zero. If we have uh, loaded and unloaded loads, we will have intermediate, uh, intermediate um, uh, elastic modulus for loading and unloading in this zone until uh, the strain is big enough till uh, this, this element, uh, the, the, the crack is completely open and there's no stress on that. Also, with this uh, material model, we are using also tendons. The tendons are modeled with uh, cables and also the casting is modeled uh, with beam elements, with a, a tubular beam element. We define contacts between the cables inside the casting yeah, and also reinforcement bar bars with an option that is insertion. So well, taking into account all these nonlinearities, we are going to open that. Here, uh, nonlinear model, and this is the model. Here we can see it is modeled with solid elements. So with elements, the mesh is very small, and we have here a lot of, lot of elements. If we check the materials, here we have first the concrete. In the concrete, if we see the cracking, these are the options that we have cracking, the stress for cracking, also shear retention, this is the shear uh, that is transferred through the crack, softening modulus, and also crushing here, and the allowable strength for crushing. So this is the nonlinear properties for uh, the concrete. Also, we have we can see here that we also have uh, reinforcement bars. These reinforcement bars we can plot them here on bottom. Also, we can plot them with uh, thickness, and here we can see that they are uh, they are th this type of uh, of element. This is truss, so it's only for tension and compression, no, uh, no bending uh, stiffness, and the, the material is the material reinforcement is this one, and we can see that for this uh, for this uh, material behavior is bilinear. So we have, we have this low stress strain diagram. So we, we can have jailing in this in this material. The last one are the reinforcement. The, the, the post-tension uh, tendons. If we plot the tendons, here we have the tendons, and we also give thickness to these tendons. Here we can see these tendons, and also the material for these tendons are uh, is a nonlinear material, and for, the, for bilinear, this is the behavior of this tendon. Also, as, as you can see here, all the materials are nonlinear. Also, we can plot the last elements we are using that are modeled with beam elements are, are the casting. Casting one pair uh, tendon. And here inside, we can see this is a tubular cross section. And here inside, we will have the tendons. And we have also defined tendons between the tendons and the and the casting, we have defined 
uh, contacts. These contacts is a touching contact with a friction coefficient between between them. And this is well, uh, this is the contacted that is the caching and the contacting this that is the tendon. So as you can see, this is a full completely non-linear model, concrete uh, uh, reinforcing and also the tendons. And well, the last, as you can see here, well, uh, the tendons are not, the, the reinforcing bars are not exactly uh, uh, fixing the mesh. That is, uh, the, the nodes of the reinforcing bars and the nodes of the solid elements uh, are, not, uh, are not in the same position. So the, the mesh is not matching, and the option to just to make them work together, as if they are saying nodes, is the insertion option. So here in the model utils, we have the insertions. These insertions, an in example for the reinforcement, we are inserting in the host uh, in the host elements that is the beam, the beam uh, structural elements, mesh with solid elements. We are inserting a rebar. rebar that is this one, the rebar one, two, and three. So with these insertions, we are making them work work together. So uh, we don't have to care about the mesh. Uh, we have a regular extruded mesh here for the solid elements, but for the caching and the and the rebars, they have this insertion options that we are um, uh, we are um, uh, connecting all the elements. And the last option we are using is using uh, this, this connection. This connection is for tying uh, the end of the tendons to the uh, solid uh, solid elements, to the concrete. We could model also with a plate here to model the to model um, this part of the tendons to model the um, the anchors. But what I have done is using this couple and I'm I'm coupling the nodes with the, this this nodes around a master node with the slaves as nodes. I use that, that option. Well, after that, I've decided to apply uh, different loads. Here you can see the load cases. I also have applied a pressure on top. You can see here on top a pressure. Sorry, uh, load group uh, uh, overload here on top. This is exactly the same over overload we have used in the previous model. That is, if we applied the same combination, uh, we should have a, a really similar results. The, considering the code, the checking and design uh, code uh, specifications follows non-linear behavior. So we have defined in the iteration diagram, even if we have solved the model with elastic linear behavior, when we generate the interaction diagram, we are considering the non-linear uh, behavior of concrete. That is the parabolic uh, stress-strain uh, diagram and also the non-linear behavior. So results should be uh, very close. So here we have solved different, uh, different um, uh, load cases. The first one is solving for self-weight. Self-weight for day 28, calculation time one. So it means we are solving a just self weight of the concrete. So we will have uh, a deformation of that. After that, we apply the pre-stressing the pre loads on the on the model. Here we can see the next, the second load case is gravity plus pre-stressing. We are using one as coefficient, so we are not increasing the loads. But this is very important. We are solving a non-linear analysis, so it's very important to follow the path of the loads. So first, when this beam is placed uh, um, on, on the bridge. This could be an, an eye kiss there for a bridge. So first, self-weight is acting. Then the next step is applying the pre-stressing to this model and then applying the overload. But for the overload, uh, we have solved two steps. The first overload, we are using the overload just here we have, we can see the overload and that we have used in the previous previous model. This overload is, here we can see the value, it's a 400 leaves per, a, per inch, per linear inch. But considering that the thickness of this, the width of the, this beam is 34.9 inches, so we have uh, making this division because here we have pressure 
uh, per, uh, per area in, and in the other are linear loads. So in this case we have exactly the same loads. And for the last step, the last step we have applied the same load combinations but increasing the overload by a factor of three. So the idea is increasing the overload until the, uh, we have the failure of this, of this uh, model. So first, if we open the first result, uh, that is, well, this is a non-linear analysis and it is solved in many steps. So the first, uh, the first step is, the first, uh, the first results we have solved is the self-weight. That is from one to, to seven. So we we'll open the last step of the, of the self-weight. So if we plot an example vertical, uh, open it, we can plot an example vertical deformed shape, deformed shape that could be a set displacement. So we have, we can see here, uh, that is a deformed shape and we are going to reduce the scale, 15 example, and in inches we can plot that we have a small deformed shape just a few inches on here on the center this around 0 0.13 inches just for being easier to plot I'm going to just to plot the concrete part the next step what we do is uh, just applying a uh, depress stressing so we are going to open depress stressing loads that is the end of the press tracing loads is this one and we open it. So now we are having, after applying press tracing, we will have the opposite deformed shape. The press tracing will generate a, an upwards displacement. We are generating due to self void plus a tendon effects, uh, a displacement of 0 0.14 inches vertical displacement. Well, we are going also to analyze if the tendons are generating any type of cracking. So, and results and X component of cracking uh, is strange. If we plot it here, we can see, well, uh, we cannot appreciate with these ranges. I'm going to modify the range of that and just to modify it a little bit and just plotting it. And well, here we can see we have some crackings here in this in the anchor zones due to this pre-stressing uh, pre effect. So well, uh, here we can see, and also some crackings here in this zone. So we can see we need, maybe need to reinforce these parts where the tendons, the anchors of the tendons, and uh, also uh, here in the zone between the flanks and the webs. Well, and just uh, after applying the, the press tracing, we can see uh, just first the results of the of the uh, of the uh, 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 load combinations without uh, applying any uh, without applying any uh, safety factors. That is the this combination, and we can see here in example vertical displacement. Vertical displacement, no results, and vertical displacements could be this one. That are, well, here we can see that is uh, just about 0 0.3 inches. It's not very big. Also, we can plot cracking, cracking in y direction, y component of cracking. And we can see, well, it's, we are not having almost any cracking. The, the strain, cracking strain is very small. And we, if we reset the range, just to be able to, to, to see something, just because we have the peaks on the, on the anchors. Well, we can see we have a smart cracking here, but just the width is very small. And here on some supports due to the to the boundary conditions. So we could suppose these cracks are very small and are allowable. And well, the last results we are going to open is the overloads that we increase 
until uh, until generating the <coughs> the uh, the cracking and jailing of the model. So these are the results that we can plot. We open it and if we reset the rate, so just also we can we have to reset uh, the 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 scale for the deformed shape. And here we plot it. We can see what we have here a big deformed shape and also and also some crackings. Here we can see also what we can uh, define a little bit the range just to be able to see better these crackings. Well, but we can see they are uh, around all the model. We have some vertical cracks here, big cracks in the center due to bending and also there are 45 degree cracks on both ends. So well, uh, these are some results in the concrete part and we are going also to see what is happening with this load that is three times the overload we had. We are going to see what is happening in the reinforcement bars. We plot these reinforcement bars and uh, we are going to see an example equivalent, equivalent plastic strain equivalent plastic strain and okay we can see also plain plotting instead of plotting in the thickness we can plot with this diagram and well we can see we are having J lint in the center of the of the of the uh, model so well let's see the evolution of this of these crackings so of, of this sorry of this J lint so if we plot results uh, equivalent plastic strain in the in the element uh, uh, 58,500, we can see here uh, just when the, the element starts jailing. So if we open uh, this, the results ultimate state here. So open, <clears throat> and we are going to plot uh, in this the end results element results the element. Zero, and we are going to plot equivalent plastic strain. So this is this is end result, and this will be equivalent plastic strain. And we are going to plot it the equivalent plastic strain of in this in this uh, reinforcing in these bars uh, versus load. So if we plot it, we can see here that we are having no yielding, but the first yielding start as at about. Uh, 827 more or less here we start having jailing and reinforcement until uh, we have big uh, jailing and reinforcement so well, we, we are we could say that when jailing starts uh, the, the section is not okay so we can compare these results with the the results with the um, the uh, beam element the beam model and apply exactly the same loads that is no coefficient for self weight, no coefficient, no, no factor for for uh, ten, tendons and uh, for prestressing loads, but uh, the same this this load for the overload. That is here. If we open this beam, we can see now that in the load case we have applied self weight plus prestressing plus the overload, and we and if we see the value of this overload that is uh, 827 uh, lips per, per, per inch so that is the same value we were applying to the other model if we solve this model and and load and load the results here we can plot an example in this model uh, forces and moments anything but we are going to check by code here, if we check by code for axial plus bending with the press stress, also we use using this plane, check it and we load the results. Here we are going to load the results here. Okay, um, plot total criterion. So we can see here the total, total criterion is 1.09. So we can see that the it's almost one so it's very close the results to the nonlinear results analysis so what well, we can see 
that we have we can uh, we can plot uh, we can uh, uh, perform a, 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 a post tension uh, models with uh, beam elements and also with solid elements with a really detailed results such as we are seeing here that we have exactly the same the same type of cracking that we had in the uh, in the in the theoretical cracks well uh, so we have solved with beam elements and also with advanced uh, solid elements. Let's see something in between. That is an example, uh, this box Kirder bridge, that we have used cell elements. In these cell elements, we apply load combinations and design by code. But also, we have performed a construction process in this model. So in this case, we can combine the construction process of the model with, uh, with these tendon effects. In this case, the tendons are applied with loads, equivalent loads to the model. So, well, if we go to, say, the next example. So, it's a combination. Here we have the next example. And, well, We can see in this model that we have that is made of cells. We have different different parts of these cells for the uh, the top part and for the the piles. We have solid elements. We have model with solid elements and also with, with these these piles. If we remove this part, in example, we also can see we have modeled the the bearings. The bearings here we have modeled them and we are using contacts contacts between the uh, top and the bottom part of the of the bridge. Also we are using springs for the foundations and well for the tendons. Here we can plot the tendons. For example we are plotting weight plus tendons on the model. Okay here. Uh, just instead of plotting the equivalent loads that I'm doing what I'm doing is plotting just the tendons, just to see the layout of the tendons. Well, here we can see we have some tendons. Uh, that is exactly the same in the rest of the model. So, well, uh, these tendons are defined uh, as we saw before. We can define tendons that are applied in this case to shell elements. Clicking here, we define uh, the tendons in the, that go through different, uh, different structural elements, shell elements. We define here the different properties, casting diameter, uh, materials we are using, all this data. And after that, uh, these tendons are, uh, are placed on the load groups. When we define a tendon in this way, with this utility, we'll have these tendons here in the load groups. So we can define many tendons in the different spans, span one, two, and three. And these tendons can be combined in the load cases with other type of loads. Here, well, uh, uh, we have solved all these all these load combinations and also check by code. So well, just for seeing some of these results, I'm going to use the group view just for uh, just plotting and also I'm going to what well, these are the tendons. Here you can see for the different uh, different spans, we have three tendons on bottom and two others in both sides of the of the uh, box. We just we are going to plot just the the part of the, the cells where we have calculated reinforcement amounts. So here we have and also and also this part and it's just the top the top is this part. So well, here we can see these are all shell elements. Here we can see with different thickness uh, 30 centimeters. This is 0 0.35 and uh, well, here we, we didn't we didn't uh, define any reinforcement groups. What we are doing in this case is calculating reinforcement amounts. In the previous model, we checked the previous reinforcement amount. Here, what we are doing is designing. So after that, what we do after solving all these load combinations, we just load one of these um, one of these uh, load combinations and check by code. Here, the way well designed by code. Uh, here in this case we are designing designing cells. Here we have different methods. 
uh, we have used the orthogonal direction, direction methods where we can include uh, uh, in plane shear and also torsional bending moment. Just performing the, the design. Uh, we are not doing now because it will take just a few, few seconds, but uh, I'm going to load directly the result. And here, I just I load this result. And, uh, and uh, well, uh, we can plot, in example, reinforcement amount. Reinforcement amount in, in X, top, and I'm going to use just some limits to be able to switch in square centimeters per meter, in example, and I plot the results. So we can see, well, sorry, because I use a very big range. And this, well, we can see here in X top, X top direction, these are the reinforcement amounts we have. We can, we need. Uh, also, we can plot in Y bottom, in example, and we can see the different reinforcement amounts we have in our model. Also, in this case, we have also calculated reinforcement amounts in the diaphragms of this model, and also where the the the, the tendon anchors. So there, if we if we select all the model and plot plot them and plot those results, we can see there are some some uh, uh, stress concentration in the diaphragms. So the reinforcement amounts is bigger in this case, 71 six square centimeters per meter, that are concentrated in the diaphragms and in that zone. Well. This is a typical combination, and the last part is the last analysis we have done with this bridge is the construction process. In the construction process, I'm going to open the new model, not saving this. And in the construction process, we can see It's been opened. What we had, uh, how Sibelfen works for the construction process is that we have to uh, to input the activation and the activation time for the materials. Here we have modeled every part of these bridge with different materials. An example for this foundation, we have the material one footing. That is this one footing. So this the activation time of this material is zero day. Okay. The next part are the piles. The piles are material two piles spiles and the activation day is 25. The next part will be this one, that is the material is 11 span, so we can select here 11 span and the activation time is 218. So we set the activation time of every element. We also set the activ activation and uh, time for the tendons in the model. Uh, so well, that is the activation time here in the tendons. So we define the activation, the, sorry, here in the sections for the tendons. These are the different tendons materials. For the first time, here we have the activation time of this material, that is the tendon. Uh, the, the, the tendon, the, the material is this one, the number six. So the number six here, we have the activation time. So adding the activation and deactivation time of tendon materials, we will activate uh, these tendons uh, during time. And then we perform the, the, the different load cases we are solving. We set the calendar time. The calendar time, here we have the first foundation. It is solved for day 15. For the next day, we are solving the model for day uh, 53. So Sibulfem activates and deactivates different materials and also set the material properties. Well, here, if we go to the slides, here we have solved a video with the results, the vertical displacement of the model, just considering the activation and the, acti the activation of the model. So, well, first, as you can see, is first the foundations, piles, then neo neoprens, then first, first part, we apply press stress, second span, we apply press stress, third, and we applied the top. So, we see first, here we did. Construct the, the, the construct the span and then apply press stressing. So that is the construction process. We can also uh, apply after the defining all the steps. We apply loads on top and second design by code, considering the construction process. Well, 
Next example we are going to see is the foundation slab. In the foundation slab we have a slab uh, where we have some loads due to the columns that are over this slab and we have some tendons, some familiar of tendons. We are using also cell elements and we are using curved tendons. The thickness of this slab is very small, 30 centimeters, and we are comparing with and without, with and without tendons. So first we are going to open example and here if we go to the next example slabs first with no press stressing here we have for the non-press stressing uh, model open it well here we have this is our slab that is cell slab just uh, in centimeters 12.5 centimeters uh, in inches sorry 12.5 inches in centimeters it's sorry in centimeters it's about uh, 30 centimeters I said in inches so here there is uh, there is uh, no uh, no tendons only uh, we apply the loads here we can see the loads we are applying and here we have the loads uh, due to these columns also we have some uh, on the mess we have some uh, some overloads on pressure on top and we have calculated reinforcement amounts we have designed calculating reinforcement amounts due to these overloads we can plot it here results of designing and uh, we have designed by the ACI code and we, if we plot uh, well uh, uh, under the under the um, under the slab we have defined uh, springs springs uh, uh, under it, springs surface, we have uh, this stiffness for those springs in X, Y and Z direction. And well, uh, after um, we are going to plot an example reinforcement in bottom of the slab, X direction, bottom, well in this unit uh, in X square inch per feet, we are plotting that we have 1.24 square units per feet in X direction and in Y direction we have here we can see it is a uh, 1.24 so it's over one square inches per feet the reinforcement they all are concentrated under the columns well if we open the next example that we have done that is this one in this model we have added a family of tendons here we can see we can plot those tendons and uh, here, press the skew loaded. Uh, well, just well, well, let's see. Here, well, with the tendons, uh, we have a lot of tendons defined, so uh, we'll take some, a bit to define those tendons. And here we have that those family of tendons that are curved and they cross under the columns. So, well, here with those tendons, we are writing the press stressing and we are designing also to calculate reinforcement amounts. So here in the model, we can see their reinforcement uh, results. So uh, the results here in the model, if we compare them in square scenes, for instance, these are the results we have in the non press stressing slab, the reinforcement, and in the post tension slab, the curved tendons, we can see results value are zero in most of the, of the slab, just in the borders we have we need some reinforcement here we have added one square centimeter per meter just to see uh, to see the scale here 0 0.75 and we can see the values are much smaller than in the other that are 26 square centimeters per meter so well just in the model here we can see the slabs it took a few minutes uh, just a few seconds to, to plot it we can see the reinforcement here uh, I, I mean a tendons here these are the tendons and the slab we can plot here, we can just hide the slab and we have here the tendons. Well, I'm going to clear to clear um, the, the tendons to plot the slab with cell elements and to plot these reinforcement amounts we have seen uh, that are very, very reduced. Here we can see in, in X bottom and in square inches per feet, we, we saw that it was 1.25 square inches per inch. And here we can see we have the 
the biggest value is 0 0.75, but in these borders, uh, where we don't have tendons, uh, well, if we reduce the scale just to try to, to see if we have some reinforcement to 0 0.01, here we can see we have no reinforcement. Also, if we zoom, we can put the mouse on top, so we can see due to this tendons compression, there is a, we don't need any reinforcement. And the same for Y direction. So we can see that with these tendons, well, we, we need a little bit of reinforcement, but, don't, but we can see with the mouse that we can plot the value. Here we need a little bit, 0 0.006, but in the center, no reinforcement is needed. So we can see the advantages of post-tension uh, on post-tension concrete on this type of foundation slabs. Well, just and the last and the last uh, model we are going to see. We don't have much time for seeing this last model, but it's a natural liquid gas tank. Here we can see it is also made with shell elements. We have two tendon families, vertical and circumferential tendons, load combinations, and also designed by code. Here we have a plot of the tendons, we have vertical tendons, and for horizontals we have different uh, different distances between those tendons. A first group of tendons here that are with a small smaller distance, other group of tendons, and other that the distance between these tendons is increased um, in the in the uh, the height of the of the model. So we can also load this last model to see and this last model here for liquid gas and this is the model this is uh, also a very big model the distance uh, let's see now the, the diameter of the model uh, it's it will take just a few seconds to load this is the progress la line okay now we have here the model here uh, just uh, to see the diameter I'm going to measure I don't remember exactly measure between two nodes and from one side to the other it's it's about 88 meters so it's a big model here we can see we are not plotting all the structural elements we have also a foundation slab here and if we plot also the tendons here we can see just here we have the tendons and well it is going to take just a few well here we have the tendons on the model so well, if we just plot it here, we can see the tendons as we had in the other model, in the in the as we saw in the slides. So well, uh, here we performed in the same way, applying this press tracing and just solving solving the model. Well, the, the, these circumferential tendons are not completely circular. There are two groups. Just plotting again the model. These circumferential tendons. There are first, the first tendon and bottom go from one of these uh, reinforced concrete from one to the other side. So it is, it is a, a 180 degrees. There is one tendon from this to this point to the other uh, part and another tendon from this to the other. So it is the complete circumferential is divided by two tendons. And the next tendon, when we go up, instead of going from this part to the opposite, just we turn 90 degrees and go from this other to the other. So we are turning 90 degrees on every turn, uh, on every ten tendon uh, when we are going up. So these are the peculiarities of this model. So well, just we don't have much, much time to see, but as you can see as a summary, Seal FEM 217 pre-stressing concrete futures are very wide and uh, can be used to model any type of structures. We have these futures can be applied to beam, shell and solid elements. We have a pre-stressing steel library uh, where we select from the library pre-stressing materials that depends on the on the codes. Uh, then uh, with the easy tendon def geometry definition we define the tendons layout and Seal FEM calculates automatically the short or the long term losses. Then Silfen transfer these losses to the model. We can make load combinations and also we can consider also the construction process and the activation and deactivation of these tendons. And also uh, after this, uh, check and design for axial bending, shear and cracking, checking and design. But moreover, this is for uh, typical calculation, but also we can use nonlinear uh, uh, 
behavior in any in all this in all the parts of the model to perform a much more uh, advanced detailed analysis. So uh, main applications, any type of concrete uh, uh, structure that could, is uh, modeled with pincel and elements such as bridges, silos and tanks, stadiums, nuclear containing buildings, slabs, uh, foundation slabs, high-rise buildings, foundations, well, industrial apartments, and they can be designed by code. And also just uh, using, considering the nonlinear behavior, this, this model could be used to obtain the capability, the, the, the capacity curve for push over nonlinear push over analysis, failure analysis, also for forensic analysis to see the reason of the failure. Also, we can consider other nonlinearities like key creep, creep uh, uh, cracking, crossing. So, well, uh, we have a really big uh, range of features that could be applied to all the model. Well, this is a fast overview of the model. We will see in the future webinars more detailed uh, uh, models with this stressing, but just to have an overview of these features. And well, here we have the website. If we open the, the website, the Civil Fem website. Here you can have more information about us and also about next webinars. Here you can plot here next webinars. We will have uh, the next webinar we will have is the, the couple thermal structural analysis where we have a uh, thermal loads will be co uh, combining with the structural loads and see the effects of them like buckling uh, of steel structures due to fire and well here you can also have partners uh, local partners uh, where you can ask for more information and also if you would like to increase your knowledge about finite element analysis and civil theme, we have also a platform here in this website, ikaek.com. Here we have a short courses, short trainings, intro, or also dynamic, nonlinear analysis. So here you can you can uh, you can register and have more information about short trainings. We have a focus in practice and a short courses and finite element analysis, and you can practice with our software that you can download. And if you would like to increase your knowledge also with a, a with theoretical part, theoretical and uh, and practical part, with longer uh, longer uh, courses, we have the online line master that is done with the open uh, the, the biggest open university, the UNET Open University, and you can also have some information in this website uh, uh, unit.s master uh, master mef so here in this website you can get much more information about this so well, also you can contact us for further information in this in this uh, in these emails uh, for sales the sales manager c dot at in, in cyber.com or the technical support support at civilfem.com you can email us for further information thank you very much for your attention and bye